Hi, I'm John Clothier, and this is the Coronet Herald from Record Power. So, as many of you will know, I recently purchased the Coronet Herald from Record Power, and this is a fantastic MIDI lathe. And I thought it might be useful to show you around and talk you through some of the features and explain some of the reasons why I chose to change to this lathe. So to start with, it's a cast iron bed. And it's mounted on steel legs. Now the steel legs are an extra, but I think it's definitely worth having them. One of the things that I really like about these legs is that they actually have a plug in the top where you can fill the, the hollow legs with sand. Now this gives you a really stable feel. I mean, that's rock solid. I mean, I can put a lot of weight onto that and it's hardly moving at all. Now they are steel, so if you are gonna fill them with sand, I would recommend to make sure that the sand is completely dry first. I used a toaster rubber and just to kind of remove the moisture. So looking at the physical size of it, the bed itself is just over five and a quarter inches or 135 millimeters across. Its length, is about 32 inches or 81 centimeters or 110 millimeters. By the time you take into account the headstock and the tailstock, this actually allows you to turn between centers 49 centimeters or 490 millimeters. And that is about just, oh, it's just over 19 inches. Now that for a midi lathe, that's a reasonable size. But one of the great things about this lathe is it actually comes, well, there's available to buy extra, an extension piece. And I've got that here. And you can see that's already mounted. And that means that I can push it all the way back over there. And now, that gives me 900 millimeters or just about 35 and a half inches, so it's just under three feet. Now for mini lathe, that's quite a length. So let's have a little closer look at the tailstock itself. All cast iron, as you'd expect. It's a two morse taper, which allows for the easy fitting of your live center uh, and things like a Jacob's chuck. It does actually come with a live center, which is fantastic. screw on the quill and it's actually marked in millimeters so you can kind of give you a, a good indication of the the depth that you're going once you've extended the quill you can lock it in place with a turn of that lever and as you can see it's now rock solid the unit itself slides very very easily very fluidly and it's held in place with its locking handle here and a short turn of that it's a quarter turn and it's locked rigid, it's not going anywhere. So that makes the whole thing incredibly stable. It is hollow all the way through, so if you do get a tool stuck, you can knock it out with a knockout bar. So the banjo, again, solid cast iron construction. Record Power do provide a small rest for you, which is great. It has a 25 mil or one inch post, which again, locks in place very easily, short turn of this, this locking handle here. And again, moves incredibly freely. And a quick press down, and it's locked rigid in place. So that's obviously a cam lock, as you'd be used to. And one thing I like about it is it's got this rubber handle. Uh, well, it's, it's solid metal, but it's a rubber coating on the handle, which means it's nice and easy on the hand as you lock it in place. So off to the business end now. And we have the outboard motor, which is fantastic. A lot of lathes have the, uh, a lot of the smaller lathes have the, the motor going out this direction, which of course means it's prone to sucking in dust and debris. But with it being out here, it's, uh, it's well out of the way. The control box is conveniently placed just above the, uh, the motor. And I'll walk you through some of the controls on that in a second. It comes with a drive center, uh, a four prong drive center and a small face plate. And this has a M33 by 3.5 uh, thread for the spindle, which means it's a fairly standard and pretty much everything that you would want for it is available. Underneath the flap on the back here is where you can adjust your belt 
position uh, and it's three different ratios that will allow you to, to operate on. There's also an indexing system and one of the things that I really like about this Dave is there's a little window here that you can look through to look for the position of uh, where your, your indexing is. And when you're in the right position, you can just simply move that pin and it locks in place and it won't move. And you can just pull it out to remove it. One of the things that I didn't like about my previous lathe, but I do about this, is that this is permanently attached. My previous one was on a, on a magnet, which meant that it was prone to being lost. Um, and yeah, I did lose it on many occasions. But that one's fixed in place, so that's great. There's also a hand wheel here. So if you wanted to rotate something manually, you can do that by hand. And there's also a hole here that you can put a knockout bar in so you can hold the thing firm to undo any attachments if they become stuck. Now I've got the knockout bar in my hand and I should just point out this isn't the one that came with the lathe. I've put that down somewhere and can't find it anywhere. But one of the best things about this lathe is that the headstock moves and rotates. So if you want to move it, all you need to do is get your knockout bar, put it in the pin and lift to unlock it and now it is completely movable so as well as sliding it you can also rotate it it has a sort of clickable position to put it into the 45 degrees and also into 90 degrees and you can again you can slide it you can actually go all the way around and have it at 360 degrees if you wish when the headstock is in this position, you can turn up to 355 millimeters or 14 inches, which is quite good. But when we rotate it, and we use the optional outrigger, which you simply remove the post, put that into position and lock it. Put the rest in here and then lock that in position. And now we have the facility to turn up to 530 millimeters or 21 inches. And then when you're finished, reposition it back and obviously to lock it, you just use your knockout bar on the cam and it's fixed solid. The motor, it's a 750 watt output motor. The control box on the top has an on off switch. So just put that on now. We have an emergency stop which obviously completely cuts the power and it actually massively slows down the, uh, the piece. So if you do have something that's gonna be out of control, you can hit the stop button and it will slow it right down. We've got our on and off buttons here. We have the reverse function. We have our variable speed control. And we have here a display that lets us know the speed that we've set the lathe to run at. So when using this, you need to know which pulley your belt is on. Now my belt is currently set in the middle position which is belt position 2. So using this button here I can press belt ratio until the little LED lights up to show me that it's at position 2. I can then adjust the control, the variable speed, and set the speed that I want the lathe to spin at. So set here I am, well 809, it was close enough 800 revs per minute. Having set that, all I then need to do is press on and the lathe starts up and will get itself up to 800 revs a minute. You can of course adjust this while it's on. So if I want to slow it down a bit, down to 485 or speed it up in fact. And that's it currently now running at 1,800 and 70 revs a minute. So you press the off to slow it down. As I mentioned, it also has a facility to go into reverse. And to engage the reverse, what you need to do is you press and hold the reverse button, but you have to have it switched uh, in stationary position first. The little red light starts to flash. And after a few seconds, it beeps to confirm that it's now in reverse mode. And now when I switch it on, 
it goes in reverse. Which of course is fantastic for reverse sanding and if you're sort of becoming a bit creative with your, your turning. Now one thing to note, when you switch it off, it automatically flicks back to forward. And that's a fantastic safety feature to make sure that you don't accidentally put it into reverse. If you do wish to use the reverse facility, the faceplate does actually come with a, uh, a grub screw that you can tighten it onto the spindle, um, and that is recommended for safety reasons. And obviously if you're using a chuck, you should make sure you do the same thing as well. And when you're finished for the day, we have the on off switch, switch it off so we can walk away. And as you see, after a few seconds, the display will go out. Now that's it running with belt position two, or belt pulley number two. And as I mentioned before, it's got three positions. If we move this onto belt position one, you can see that when we turn it down, it will actually go down as low as 90, 95 revs a minute, which is nice and slow. So if you're doing any of those kind of fine texturing or coloring things, you might want to have it really running really slow. 95 is a good speed. And on that position, it will go all the way up to 1,055. When it does go into that lower speed, of course, it's putting out a lot more torque. And this is a very torquey motor. It's surprising how much power this thing has got for such a small size. So if you're doing something large up to the 20, 21 inches and you're doing it outboard, you may want to go down to that speed, uh, down to that setting to give you that extra grunt, but it will still kick out 1000 revs a minute, which is more than enough. Go to belt position two. This will go down as low as 140 revolutions a minute and will go up to 1868, which for most everyday turning is a good range. Working our way up to belt position three, it goes down as low as 290. Now I've actually found that 300 is a, is a kind of a magical number. If you're doing things like spraying lacquer or uh, applying paint uh, or dye or something with an airbrush, 300 is a good speed where it's going quite fast, but things aren't flying off. So that's nice to know that even on the top setting, I can go that low. And if I wind it all the way up, it actually goes up to 3890. So that's fantastic if you're polishing things like acrylic or you know doing some small things like your pens and your finials. So that's a fantastic range. So what may be upgrade to this lathe? The biggest reason is the rotating, swiveling, movable headstock. Giving me the extra capacity to turn the bigger things is a fantastic step up for me. 21 inches is pretty huge. Um, we're talking, you know, it's like this. It's a massive great platter or bowl. So being able to do that is fantastic. Also having the extension piece means that I can actually do some much longer things as well than I may have done before. One of the projects I'd like to work on is a pull key or snooker key and this lathe will give me the capacity to do that. There are other lathes available that will have these kind of features and for the same kind of money but what this does have is the cast iron bed. To me that's really important. I like to have that flat cast iron. I'm not a fan of the bars, the round bars. I like the fact that I can put something on it and it's going to stay flat. I also like the extra weight that it gives me. And the fact that these legs, as I mentioned before, are hollow and can be filled with sand really does add to the weight. It also adds to the stability. So there you go, there's the Coronet Herald. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found that useful. See you again soon.